Hello everyone, my name is Desala from Fashion Designer and you are welcome to my channel. So today I'm talking about things that I wish I knew before starting a ready to wear clothing line. So I'm an African inspired ready to wear fashion designer and I've been in business for nine years and I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. My business has existed for nine years and there's some things that I wish I knew before starting. Why do I wish I'd known these things from the get-go? I feel that some of the things that I know now, if I had known them at the beginning, some of the, some of the things I wanted to achieve, it wouldn't have taken me such a long time to achieve them. I would have achieved them within a shorter period of time. And the first one is that not everybody's gonna support your business. Not everybody is going to buy into your vision. Not everybody's going to support you in your new business or even if it's an existing business that you started. And the thing is, if everybody doesn't support you, there's nothing wrong in it. It is your dream, it is your vision, and it is yours and yours alone. It is up to you to translate your vision to people and it's up to them to buy into your vision. And if they don't buy into your vision, there's nothing wrong in it. When I first started my business, um, when I told people that I wanted to start fashion business, a lot of people were very, 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 very surprised. Like, why do I want to do fashion? Yes, they know I'm very fashionable, I dress well, and, you know, all those things that come with fashion, but I actually go and do a business in fashion. A lot of people thought I would not last. A lot of people thought I would not survive. Even people that were close to me, you know, they thought that I wouldn't go that far. But I thank God, you know, I managed to find my way through. And when you start a business, for example, when you start running the business and you know, you want customer, you want to start building your customer base, you want to start um, making sales, and you say, or oh, even if people support your vision and they say, oh, don't worry, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And when your business actually starts and you don't see these people, don't be upset. You know, people are going to talk. But the thing is that they say action speaks louder than words. So it's nothing to be upset about. In, in my own business, when I first started, when people, when I, when I started my business, I, I thought to myself, or even when I opened a new store, then I would say, oh, this person will come, based on what they've told me, this person's gonna come, this person's gonna buy from me, this person's gonna do this, this person's gonna do that. And when you all start, you don't see anybody, it's all crickets. And I would be so hurt, I would be so upset, I would be so disappointed. But the thing is, I've come to realize that not everybody's going to support you. And because everybody's not supporting you, it doesn't make them bad people. It's just life. It's just life. Different things may have happened in their lives or along the way that may not have allowed them to stick to their promise. Well, that's for them. I'm a kind of person that I believe that when I make a promise to somebody, I like to follow through, but not everybody's like that. So there's nothing to be upset about. There's nothing to feel bad about in any way. You just stay focused, stay true to yourself, true to your dream, and true to your vision. Another thing is that I wish I knew when I first started my business is a, a brand is not built overnight. A brand is built over time. Same goes for a brand, a business is not built overnight. A business is built over time. When I first started, I had this idea in my head that when I start, you know, and you know, put this thing in place, that in place, this in place, and everything falls this way, that way, and you know, everything's just going to happen, bam, 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 bam. It doesn't always happen that way. There are so many factors to consider when you're when you um, 
starting a business, when you're starting a clothing line, when you're starting a brand. There's so many things. And I also see people, they start a business and they, and they expect that once they start this business, because they've invested so much money in the business, the business will take off just like that. For some people, for very few, it happens and they're very lucky that, you know, they will start a business and things will just take off just like that. But for some, it's not, or even for majority, it's not always that way. A brand is built over time. It's not something that, because... When you start a business, you are proving yourself. You are proving you are you are proving yourself to your customers. You are communicating the value that you deliver to your potential customers, to people who are looking at you. And even if they think, yes, she's a big or she's a brand or whatever, trust takes time. Same way in a relationship, you start a relationship with somebody. You can't just meet somebody and say, oh, I trust you. Trust takes time. And trust is one of the main things that builds a brand. When you build trust with your customers, when you have customers coming back to your business to patronize your business, over time, then you are building a brand. So a brand is not built overnight. It's built over time. Another thing that I, I, I actually didn't see coming when I first started. I saw it coming, but I didn't really see it coming because I left my job to start this business. And because a lot of people doubted me, I wanted to prove a point. I was ready to do the work. I was ready to, you know, work really, really hard to make this business, you know, you know just be successful. I was ready to do whatever it took, but I never knew that I would work hard quite all right, but I never knew that working for yourself, you will work three times harder than when you're working for somebody else. You will work three times harder. In the early days, even sometimes now, I walk around the clock and I'm always working most of the time. If I'm not working, I'm doing my duties as a mother, as a wife, and trying to get some social life for myself. A little bit, so I don't get lost in everything. But yes, you would work so hard, even harder than when you're working for somebody. Because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. But when you're when you're really, really working and working for your business and working so hard, and you're working around the clock. That's where you start to find your passion. When you see yourself working over time, day after day, week after week, month after month, and you're not tired, you're not upset, you're not feeling some kind of way, but rather you're feeling very enthusiastic. You're, when your alarm goes off in the morning, you're so eager to jump out of bed and go and you know, do that hustle and really, really work hard. That's where you now see that this is where my passion lies. But if your alarm goes off in the morning, like, oh gosh, this is like this business. Even though, yeah, sometimes when, when you run a business, sometimes you may feel like, you know, I don't feel like going to work. You know, things aren't going well. I just feel like staying in bed. I just feel like staying at home. Those kind of times, those kind of days, they happen once in a while. But I'm talking about when you wake up in the morning, the average day when you wake up in the morning is so enthusiastic to go to work and just go and work, 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 work. Yes that's what I mean by that is where your passion lies so I expected that I was gonna work hard but I never thought that the hours I spend running my business I never thought I would spend those kind of hours those kind of crazy 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 hours so yeah that's one thing that I wish I knew before starting a business and when you are working so hard it's so easy to get lost. It's so easy to get lost and carried away and you're not conscious of what is going on around you. So that's one of the things that I wish I knew before I started my um, ready to wear clothing line. So another thing was um, having to motivate myself. So basically, when you start a business and maybe when you start your ready to wear clothing line or you start a fashion business, whichever one, we expect that people would 
saying, well done, or when you're working so hard and working around the clock and you're delivering, delivering, and you're, you know, meeting your deadlines, and you're this, this, that, 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 that. And you think, the kind of saying, oh, well done, you're done so well, or maybe when your customer comes for their clothes, or maybe when they come and buy clothes from you. The thing is, don't wait for people to motivate you. Don't expect people to motivate you. If they motivate you, fine, but if they don't, don't be upset about it. You need to learn to motivate yourself, which was what I learned in my business. No one told me, but I had to learn this for myself. Because there's some times that you wake up in the morning and you're just like, God, I've worked so hard. Why am I not seeing results? Those times are the times where you have to learn to motivate yourself. Because everybody has their own issues. Everybody has... The, their own thing that they're dealing with so honestly you're the last person on their mind and even if you're not the last person on their mind some people can see that you are working very hard they can see that you're doing a very good job but they don't want to they don't want to tell you they don't motivate you because they just have bad mind bad mind yes i said it bad mind so yes Motivate yourself. Don't wait for anybody to do it for you. When you've done a good job, give yourself that tap on the back and say, yes, you've done well. You've done really, really well. Which is what I had to learn. I had to learn it and learn it the hard way. Another thing I wish I knew was staying relevant in fashion business. Because today you are in, tomorrow you are out. So you have to remain relevant. You have to stay relevant. When I first started, I just thought, oh, ready to wear, you just sew some nice clothes and just put them out there. Those clothes you put out there, you don't go out and do the work to get those clothes off the rack. Darling, you see those clothes hanging on that rack for months and months and months and months to come. And you don't want that. That is money. Money hanging, looking at you money that you cannot spend so you have to go and do the work to make those clothes go away from your store or from your whatever you give it and that work is marketing marketing i did my marketing in the beginning but i didn't really i didn't really know how to go about it very well i did the best i could and looking back, I did the best I could. I could have done better than that. But I wish I knew more than I did then. Another thing I wish I knew before I started my clothing line was growing a thick skin. I am a very sensitive person by nature. And when you're doing business, when you're doing business in Nigeria, you have to go with thick skin. You have to have a very, very, very thick skin for so many reasons. Because things will happen, people will disappoint you, so many things. And that was something I wasn't used to. I came from a corporate environment where things work like this, like this, like this, like this structure. And then you come out to the real world of business where you meet all kinds of people, you see all kinds of things, and you have to go a thick skin. Can't complain, just have to deal with it and forge ahead. So that was something I wish I knew. When I started my business, I didn't even know anybody who, who ran a business. 